Hey guys, how are you? Thank you for joining us today. Exciting test day, right? It's going to be all about testing. Is it like a pop quiz? Eh, not really, but uh, it's going to be exciting. Is More it? exciting than any other test conversation that you've ever heard. All right. So Definitely. testing, if you're here for testing, you're in the right place. Welcome. Uh, Extract Lab, Extract Talks. We're talking about different titles and things that that's what we've been doing all, all week. Yeah. Talking about what we're doing next. What, what is our next, uh, our next big thing? Oh, you mean next week? What are yeah. we talking about? I think it's a... It's a rematch. It's a rematch. It's yeah. a rematch. Cage fight. Yes. Cage Ethanol fight. versus CO2 rematch. There wasn't enough blood last I think, week. I think it's a... Last time we did it. So. Based on the last question we had, it was like a grudge match. It's yeah, it was. It was oh a, that's okay. We, we'll get there. We'll get there. Whatever. Oh, uh, anyway, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you being here. If you're, if you're new here, there is a red button on the top that'll allow you to reconnect. You just have to push that button if you freeze up for any reason or your internet gets slow push that and it'll reconnect immediately you don't have to log out log back in which is hey, awesome. hey before we get started yeah uh hey oh yeah here before we get started i gotta i gotta oh. light light the cigar here oh yeah <laughs> Hang on here. Okay, there we are. There you go, Winston. There. All right. Okay. Our third man. <laughs> yeah. We we just play fiddle to him. That's good. Okay. Also, this is a fun and safe place to ask questions. Ask as many questions as you want. We love it. Uh, we need those. There are going to be some polls uh, coming up uh, here and there. Uh, this is uh, full questions, full everything. Let's uh, go. Uh, we do have the live tour available for you as resource. We do a live tour. Our, our five ton facility here um cbd jam sessions are available we, a lot of you have been taking advantage of those do you yeah. realize that yeah um, yeah it's really great our team is it's loving cooking. It. they're asking they're, yeah. a lot of good questions and a lot yeah. of valuable insight so we're learning from you just like you're learning yeah. from us yeah well hopefully well it's a great one-on-one -on -one. <laughs> it's an opportunity to ask your question to people yeah. who you know who are talking to customers all day long yeah. um yeah and so. it's safe there's nothing there there's no pressure there's no nothing we're just here to serve you so yeah. call join cbd jam sessions that's what we're calling them uh, we do have an advanced extraction guide calculator library is online i think you've got uh, that. Is it, it, it it's almost is there's it, a, uh, un poco. it's un poco it's <laughs> almost there almost there okay it, but i think i talked to tim he said he's got like 11 yeah you're, you're just waiting you're just yeah polishing them up well no i i still have to i just go through and reviewing them and, and it's almost done so they are, i'm a bottleneck okay they're whatever very what cool say? no it, it, important because we want to make sure you get good tools yeah. mini course libraries coming up all good stuff so thank you for being here again test testing that's what the topic is today yes. testing 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 not one, <clears> one two, two three. three is it one two three no it's oh, not i really. almost said jinx <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Then uh, who would have to pinch who? I don't know. Isn't that how that goes? No, no. Charlie Horse. Oh, <laughs> Charlie Horse. That's right. Okay. It's silly me. Um, poll is up there. Are you a uh, grower? This is going to help us answer some of your testing questions and field this in. Mm -hmm. Are you a farmer, grower, processor, chemist? Uh, investor, entrepreneur, who are you? Uh, that would be good for you because that'll help us tailor where we should talk most about testing. And if you're asking the question, pretty much we'll know where the test question is coming from right. in the process. But right. I know you've got a few things you want to talk about. Yeah, we're going to switch up the format a little bit. Okay. Uh, so I have uh, I have a series of slides that I put together. Okay. And it, and we're just going to be going through you know some of the problems in testing. I think that'll hit a nerve with a lot of the people that are listening. I love the last time you did that presentation yeah. and everything. So I'm looking forward. But to in this, this case, yeah. it's all going to be live in interactive. Oh. In other words, oh, so we're going to bring be, your questions yeah, in during it. So while, while you're going, doing it, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, it was live, but it was more sequestered yeah. last time. So we're learning, right? So we're doing this better. So with some input. So thank you. So as we go through this presentation, go ahead and bring in your questions. We've got ever, already some coming in. So thank you for that. Thank you. Um, all right. So do you want to hit it? Yeah, let's do it. I, let's let's hit it here. Um, and hey, while he's setting it up, I'm sorry. I just wanted you to know we have nomination win, uh, uh, winners, <coughs> nominated Facebook winners this week. Tina Maxi. All right. And Instagram winner, Michelle Benton. We called them momination since this Sunday is going to be okay. Mother's Day, I think. All right. At least where we are in the queue All uh, right. of, of that. So that's good. Congratulations. Make sure that you participate, engage in our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, subscribe. Love it. 
Sorry. Okay, now the slides are up. Okay. You're on. Very, very good. Let's do this thing here. I'm relegated stage left. Um, yeah, and I'll just kind of move over here into the camera with my head <laughs> like this. That's <laughs> no big deal. Okay. Okay, guys. So um, here's, here's the deal. Here's the top five facts that you need to know about testing uh, for cannabis or hemp or CBD or whatever you're looking at. So um, first, first rule uh, is that basically... Uh, all the test testing that takes place, the rules for accept, the accept criteria varies from state to state. Um, and in fact, uh, some states have no rules, uh, some like self-policing, some states have require metals testing, other states don't require metals testing. So uh, the rules are basically all over the place. Mm. And uh, the issue with that, of course, is that uh, it really kind of, you know, kind of lends itself to, say, manufacturers or people who are a little less uh, stringent on their um, on their testing to go shop for the easiest pass. So that's something everybody needs to be aware about, uh, you know, especially consumers. So as they do that, I'm yeah. sorry, uh, when they are looking for what tests are required in their state, is that an easy Google what? tests are yeah, available yeah what actually I, what do I need to do um yeah so you can go to the state uh register and you can look up the law and you can see what is testing um uh, there were some articles that were written to where it went state by state but essentially what it ended, the article ended up just being a state by state bitch session <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't wasn't really good it was like oh here's everything that's wrong here here's everything that's wrong here this didn't work here uh -oh. call your legislature you know oh. um so it wasn't really <laughs> a st strictly on the rules got it um but there 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 are articles out there if you take a look at it um it, it would be a lot of work to go state by state and just do like a comprehensive well, list we've of all got that. our guys and you know one of the things that we can do is we can start trying to put that some of those links together from our team and yeah. just at, at least post it somewhere in a blog post just easy link right uh, so but make sure you look for your state's parameters wherever you are You're right, exactly no problem at all um, there can be problems with the test results or the formulation so I don't really know okay there's always this idea of presumption of innocence right <laughs> Um, but the problem is I don't know who, who there, there's usually two players and you don't, one could be innocent and the other could be innocent. So, but usually there's an accusation and then, uh, and then, and then, you know, depending on what side you're talking to, if you're talking to the laboratory, well, it's just because, uh, yeah, that's, that's what it is. And we, we have all of our stuff together and yeah, they have a contaminant or, um, or if it's the manufacturer, uh, it's always the laboratory's fault. So there the reality is, though, that there there are definite problems with uh, with the test with some test results. You have to um, you have to understand uh, your vendor, and you have to understand the processes that your vendor is using. And then, as a as a uh, manufacturer, you really need to set up your organization for the the highest grade level of testing and we'll kind of go into where you would do that in this case so also um you anybody who's listened to our prior podcasts uh knows that my opinions on uh past designations so a past designation does not mean that your product is pure mm. and i got i have again i have this uh tincture here that kind of shows it this is a this is would receive a past designation from every basically every third-party lab in the country but it has, you know, 5,000 ppm of pentane, 2,000, uh, 5,000 ppm of 2-propanol, 5,000 ppm of uh, methanol, acetone, 5,000 ppm. Again, if you took this, it, it, it really smells horrible, but it would be a pass designation. Uh, a third party would say it's okay, uh, but you, you, you wouldn't be able to, um, you wouldn't be able to actually you know that's taste, bad stuff it. yeah you, it's really bad stuff you made me smell it yeah it's on it's, air one time yeah and, it, and, it's it's horrible and if you took this every day it's like drinking this your bottle of water yeah yeah so the, that's that the issue if you had a if you had a a you know a known contaminant mm -hmm. and it with a pass designation in other words a, go, a good pass uh certificate a c of a that says this is okay to take and you took that you know, uh, basically three dropper fulls of your tincture per day, you'd be drinking approximately 370 or uh, 470 milliliters worth of heptane per year. Ooh. Yeah, it's a real issue. Oh. 
So it's just disgusting. And, and not only that, uh, at some point in time, like I said before, we have to get away from, uh, you know, taking chemicals into our bodies. Okay. Avoid manufacturers who do not have an SOP for flagging and identifying unknowns. This is a really big deal. Did anybody here remember the uh, vitamin E acetate crisis and the vaping crisis? Okay. Uh, look, mm. if, if the manufacturer had, or, or third-party testing labs for that matter, um, had a process to say, hey, there's this big peak in here, it, and, and we identified it, and it's vitamin E acetate. Do you know that that's in there? Okay, that would be, uh, that would be the, the, the most uh, beneficial test to have. So a lot of times you get things uh, like your ingredients or your raw ingredients in to your manufacturing facility, and if there's an unknown in there, you have to flag it, and you have to figure out what that is before you go forward. Um, and so uh, we'll kind of go uh, and talk a little bit about that. We'll talk a little bit about how uh, that really works with your third-party um, testing facility. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. And then a flower test method can't be used to test lotion without revalidation. Okay, and uh, we have seen this time and time again where, uh, you know, laboratories uh, that are third-party, um, they will take a flower method and then you'll give them a lotion sample or you'll give them a sample in a different matrix and they'll test it, uh, something with high fats or high sugars, they'll test it with the exact same method and they'll get a different result. Uh, and uh, yeah, and so without revalidating it, you, if you have a, a given matrix, like for example, a lotion matrix, your test has to be validated in that matrix. That, that's it. Mm -hmm. So um, those are the top five facts you need to know. And uh, let me advance here and go on to the next slide. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of do an outline here. I'm going to show you some of the problems with testing. You do not have to go very far uh, on the internet and Google, and basically uh, you can find all kinds of problems. I mean, and there's lawsuits going on. There's mm -hmm. falsification of data going on. There's lack of uh, verification. I'll, I'll talk about some of my experiences uh, as well, so I'm just going to kind of go through this. Um, this is kind of a nice example that I found yesterday um, showing uh, two, different, uh, two different laboratory testing, third-party laboratory testing, ostensibly uh, running the same exact method this, for the same exact thing. In this case, they're looking at a potency and uh, you can see here's the samples right here. And then this particular lab getting this result right here. Oh, my gosh. And then the other lab getting this result. And there are dozens, if not multiple dozens of examples of this in, you know, in, in, the, you know, in the mass media. They've done this, okay? Um, they have, you know, and also more... Uh, you know, more uh, scientific studies. This, this happens to come from the uh, Department of Ag. And it, 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 really, it really does highlight, hey, look, there are variations, so you really need to make sure that uh, you understand what your lab is all about, what, what they're testing, how they're testing it. Mm. Sometimes you need to have uh, a, an expert come in because this is always going to get you in your end product. So if you're a manufacturer and you send out an end product, Suppose I'm the customer and my lab is can test and suppose I'm the manufacturer and, uh, you know, you're the manufacturer and you're, yours is steep hill. Well, there would be a difference in, sure. in, you know, claim of the label, right? Yeah. So that's a, that's an issue. So I'm just going to highlight it here. Um, and here's another one related specifically to detected, like, for example, um, you know, some bugs here. It looks like we've got Salmonella, E. coli, and Aspergillus. Aspergillus. So uh, there's three different uh, tests there for our biological tests. You can see this laboratory only detected one. That's because they were using QPS PCR, which is a technique. And I think these guys were plating them out, which is a different technique. So again, um, two different techniques giving two different answers with two different methods. Um, which one is right? Which one is wrong? Uh, you know, that is something that um, I think that uh, you could say that they're both right uh, because uh, there are limitations in certain tests that are, that are present in one test that are not present in another test. Mm. So I think you just, you know, that's why you just got to understand exactly what it exactly is that you're paying for. Um, here's an example, interesting, and I, 
I've, I, I know a little bit about the Sequoia Labs, but they were actually falsifying data for, for, uh, for companies, you know, like, and this I think can happen, for example, with, uh, you know, with THC, there's a, there's a big, um, you know, if you have a crop, for example, and you have, uh, you know, a lot of, mm, say a lot of, uh, a huge amount there and you want to make sure that it doesn't have any THC in it. I mean, there is a, there's a definite motivation there to make sure that you have the right test and um, make sure that it's under the right amount of THC. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could actually go around and, and find companies that would probably give you a test. For example, that would be, that would be, you know, low on the THC side. Okay. Some, some, uh, Third-party testers are known for that. Okay, wow. so, um, you know, that's, again, gives rise to shopping issues. And uh, so, anyway, I, I'm going to give you some recommendations as to how to, how to really deal with this. But um, you can see that falsification of data does occur. And when it does, by the way, you're going to get caught if you do this. <laughs> okay. And, and when you do, it's, it could cost you millions. In this case, they had 29 firms and, uh, mm -hmm. that were caught... Uh, you know, basically falsifying data. And I don't actually know if that's been proven. Um, but, uh, and I don't know exactly what happened. They probably settled it out. But I know they had to recall a whole bunch of the uh, products and that cost them millions. So um, this actually happened to one of our clients, the Tale of Two Labs. Um, we had, uh, let me see here, what do we have? We had a, we had a lotion. And the lotion was sent to uh, several third party, uh, and then we also tested it with our own, with our own laboratory, internal laboratory, and we were getting similar results uh, on the amount of CBD. And uh, then we sent that to uh, a customer, and that customer sent it to a a local laboratory, and it was also an ISO accredited laboratory. Um, they came back with radically different uh, amounts of CBD. Uh, and so that caused an issue with, okay, are you guys, mm -hmm. are you guys actually, um, you know, kind of making your product so that you're you know, less CBD than what you're claiming on the label? Okay, so it looks bad. And when it looks bad and it doesn't go your, your way, obviously there's always a the thought that maybe you're guilty. Okay. <laughs> sure. It's it just kind of just by the fact, if it had gone the other way, it probably wouldn't have been a big deal. But it was, since it was less than what the label claim was, then it was a big deal, right? Sure. So anyway, um, so anyway, that both laboratories were ISO 17025 accredited. We, uh, we did a root cause analysis, okay, which I was uh, involved in. And it turned out that the... The customer's laboratory uh, did, were not using a validated method. They were actually using a method that was intended for flour. Oh. And so they were taking a lotion matrix and using a flour method on that. That's why I say you have to have a validated method. If sure. you don't have a validated method for the matrix that you're in, you're not going to get the right results. So that, that's a big issue. Um, so the, what was at stake in that case was hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of future orders. Mm -hmm. So we, we really took... Um, we really took a lot of our, um, we took, you know, I got involved in that, um, and, uh, we had our laboratory involved in that and there are all kinds of different things. Uh, you know, the lawyers are exploiting the situations now. This is a lawsuit that was filed just, I think it was just last week. Um, there was a company that had, uh, basically had claims that they didn't have any metals and that they didn't have any pesticides. And uh, they sent it off to one laboratory. And then uh, a guy bought a bunch of the stuff uh, that this company was selling and then sent it off to the same laboratory to get retested. Mm. And it turned out that the, te the two tests were not, not the same. One, the stuff that he had was contaminated. Oh, my gosh. And the stuff that... Uh, and he sent it to the same lab. The same exact lab. Oh, my gosh. So, so there's, the lab's not, the lab is a, was a, is a really, actually, it's a very good lab. Mm. Um, and, you know... I trust what they were doing, but they also, here's, here's the other thing. Like, uh, if I send my lab, my, my test to a, a company 
in a state that doesn't really require like a lot of pesticides. And then I want to sell it in the whole entire, uh, you know, United States. In that state, if, you don't, if you're only testing for three pesticides in one state, and then you're testing for 60 pesticides in another state, um, it, it, and you get a pass in the, in the laboratory where there's only three pesticides, sure. okay, um, what, what are you really doing? Because the customer is going to take that and send it off to the lab where they're testing for 60. So you may have an issue. So if you want to, you know, sell sell to the United States as a whole, you're going to want to take and uh, test, uh, you know, select your laboratory that does a lot of pesticides, for example. So, um, but getting back to this lawyers exploiting the situation, uh, you know, this is a class action lawsuit. And um, so you, you really have to make sure that uh, not only your label is proper, but you really have to make sure that, um, you know, you know exactly what's in your products that are going out into the consumer market. Uh, because I think that this is going to continue to occur. And um, there's, there's more than one class action lawsuit, actually. So, um, you know, from the consumer standpoint, buyer beware, yes. But also from the manufacturer standpoint, cover your ass. Uh, you make bet. sure you cover your ass. Make sure that it's in it. You got to do the right thing. So... You know, if you say it's pesticide free and you use the test where they're only testing for three pesticides and say, here's my test and then send it to a state where, you know, 60 pesticides are being tested on, that is a problem. Use the right testing methodology. Use the right yeah. validation methods. Right. Use the, the similar things to, that are based on your claims. Right. I remember in college I had a, <laughs> an economics course, and the, one of the key books was How to Lie with Statistics. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there's lies, damned lies, and then there's statistics. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's but that's what this reminds me of. Yeah. Oh, well, it's kind of... Okay. Yeah, so a, a lot of consumers are like, well, how can I ever know uh, that what I am actually imbibing is uh, safe? Okay, the manufacturers are like, uh, you know, look, we have our tests. Um, some of them are doing the right thing. They're, they're testing. Um, they're, sometimes they're going beyond the requirements of their particular state by selecting laboratories that are out of state, for example, um, so they can get, you know, better test results. Um, so you can see there's a conundrum here. Mm. And, um, yeah, so let me, let me move on here. Okay. One of the things that I think is, is very, very important is, is testing for unknowns. Um, and that is, uh, you know, like we had this uh, vape, vape breakout. Um, when was it? Uh, it was early on in 2019, yeah. right? Uh, and that's when people started killing over dead from um, a contaminant, uh, which was called uh, vitamin E acetate. And uh, People were putting in vitamin E acetate, so such as to so to emulsify it and make it more water soluble, so they could put it in PG and VG. That's my theory. Okay, and um, of course y you can take vitamin E and eat it, and you don't have any problem. But when you start to inhale it, it it becomes a problem. So people were looking at the label. Oh, it's perfectly fine. It's vitamin E. It's an antioxidant. It's perfect. Well, let's start smoking it. Okay. So let's uh, put it into our vapor juice. And, you know, the deal with the vapor juice and the, you know, the actual e-juice that was in there, it was a THC e-juice, um, it passed all the tests, got certifications. Oh, yeah, this passes. Passes potency, purity, identity, didn't have any contaminants in it. Uh, it passed it, passed all the tests. Yet it still killed people. That's because there was a huge peak in there in their test that said, oh, this is an unknown. They didn't identify what the unknown was. And that nor was there any flag that said, hey, there's something unknown in here. It's just pass, 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 pass. Okay. That's a problem. Okay. And I think that the manufacturers really have an opportunity here to uh, give confidence to the consumers um, by by saying, hey, look, we, we, we not only do third-party testing, but we also do testing internal to us. And this is actually the future of the business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have a check on our own uh, tests. We know what we're doing. We have our own tests. Uh, but, uh, but we have a check, and that's called a third-party test. But then we have our own lab, 
and retesting for unknowns there. Okay. And uh, for example, I'll, I'll give you an example that we had early on in my career. We had purchased uh, three barrels of, what was it, uh, food grade ethanol, and they were all had the same lot number. And we did a full battery of tests prior to letting it into, taking it out of quarantine, letting it into our manufacturing lab. Uh, one of the tests, one of the tests for one of the barrels from the exact same lot showed up with a high level of arsenic in it. Oh. So if we had just, you know, said, okay, we're going to use this and taken the C of A from the customer for that particular lot, there must have been a contamination in the barrel or whatever we didn't know about. But if we had done that, we would have contaminated an entire, an entire batch. Uh, and uh, that would have basically made all of our end products fail for the arsenic, right? Well, yeah. So it, it's really good to have like incoming inspections and income and QC and all the stuff that are, you know, right. that, that's, that's normal with any other food supplement product. And by the way, that, that is the normal for supplement products. All of your ingredients coming into your factory has to be tested and it has to be tested to, to see if it's got contaminants in it. And if there's unknowns in it, you should flag it and say, what is the unknown to the manufacturer? Uh, and um, you should have a quality agreement with your manufacturer of your raw ingredients. That's just obvious, okay? And uh, it's pretty much required by, you know, and general practice and good practice, uh, good accepted practice all over, sure. all over in the supplement world. So, um, so that's, that's my whole shtick on uh, why, why you should test for unknowns. Now, third-party test, uh, testing facilities don't usually test for unknowns. So if they saw that extra peak there, they wouldn't even they wouldn't do anything with that. They would just give you a pass fail on the test that you ordered. Okay, cannabinoid panel test that you ordered. Okay, yes, fat pass fail. They don't know what that other peak is in there. They don't care, um, and it's not what you paid them to do. So if you want to uh, if you want to be able to be on that level of saying, okay, look, we test for unknowns as well, then you got to do that yourself, or you can um, talk to your laboratory and have them. Have them say, hey, look, at any given time, if you see something out of the ordinary, uh, like added peaks or anything like that, that you don't know what they are and they weren't in any of our other samples, then, uh, then tell us. You can have that written up into a quality agreement. So that's a good idea. So the beautiful mind of an analytical chemist is yeah. that when it sees a peak, it wants to examine what the heck that What was. it is. Yeah. What is Identify it? the unknown, okay. right? So you can have specific equipment to do that. It, it, it's expensive, that equipment, but it... Uh, but it's, it's really worth your time and effort to really get that done. Look for the or peak. even just to ask the question, oh, we don't know what that is, okay? I, I think that some manufacturers might shy away from that simply mm. because, uh, you know, well, it, we don't know what it is, so we don't want to know what it is, <laughs> right? Don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. But I tell you, it, it's, it's, it's always worth your while to know exactly what's in there. Um, and if, it's a, if it could be, for example... In the case of the three barrels, one of them had arsenic in it. Crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Okay. So um, what are the potential causes? I'm not going to really go into this in detail, um, but just, just uh, and, and I think that it's not all perfect here. Um, there's, there's a lot of, it's a complicated set of issues that are wrapped around these analytical problems. I don't immediately uh, point fingers at anyone whether it's the manufacturer or the laboratory, I don't do it. Uh, and, you know, people are very, um, have been kind of a knee-jerk reaction to really uh, point the fingers at the third-party laboratories. I don't know if that's the proper, uh, proper response. Um, so, um, yeah, so anyway, and then some, some people point the fingers at the manufacturers as well. You know, oh, it's their fault, right? Sure. You know, it's like... It's more complicated than that because you have a method, you have a test, you have it, you have uh, you have to make sure it's validated. Okay, so don't jump to any conclusions. Go do your root cause analysis, and here's some potential root cause analysis for you. You got different methods from from lab to lab. So I might have um, I want you to test for THC in one lab. You have a totally different method to do that in another lab using a different column, different set of conditions, different instrumentation, different everything. So, you know, each one of those laboratories, they could get the same result if, uh, if they had validated methods, 
Okay, so that's, that's the second thing. Wrong method, including wrong analytical equipment. Um, and then different validation protocol or no validation protocol. Um, you know, a lot of people are just using, uh, they don't have the, their methods that are validated. You have to validate your methods. In other words, once you start to measure something, you have to know, um, you know, you have to really do what's called a validation step where you, you check to make sure that the method is robust enough where you can actually use it and that it's accurate and you're getting the recoveries and all of that. That's what validation is. Okay, so you know, just measuring something, that's just a measurement. A validated method is something different. So when, if you're vetting out your, uh, your laboratory, just go ahead and ask them, are they, do they have all validated methods? Can they share, you, share with you the validation SOP that they use? Okay, I mean, that would be the same, okay. And then um, same analytical and sample prep method for many of the different matrices. That's again, getting back to, if you use uh, the same method for all the different types of samples, you're go always gonna come up with the wrong answer because um, a cookie sample is not the same as a sample in ethanol or a flour sample is not the same as a lotion sample. So you, ha you have to have different analytical and you have to have different sample prep methods for that. And then um, sample preparation validation of methods. Okay, so sample prep is probably a really big area here that I think, um, you know, it, there's a whole science around that sample prep. Um, I know um, a, quite a bit about the sample prep side. Some people use what like, they call catchers. Some people use what they call, you know, just dilute and shoot. Some people sonicate. Okay, you're going to get different uh, results from each one of those different pre sample prep methods. Mm. So anyway, uh, those are some things that you need to think about. I encourage you to, if you do have a problem, you call us. We can help you look at, you know, what that problem might be. Um, we can take a look at it um, and see if we can give you a hand uh, to try to sort out the issues. Um, on a consulting basis, it's not a problem. Uh, also, there are some really great chemists out there. Um, and um, when you talk to the different uh, third-party laboratories, they, they've they seen a lot. If you talk to them, hey, look, I, I got this result here from this lab and this result here, they will, if you get them both on the phone talking, they'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. They will figure it out. They'll Because one guy will be pointing at the other and they have to defend it. You don't have to do anything. So... I would recommend that you, you get, uh, you, get uh, you know, just, just to do good business, get people on the phone, get people talking, um, and uh, get expert help if you need it. So, all right, uh, let me see here. Go down to the next one here. Okay, so that, that's, the, that's the problems with the testing. And I think I, I, I should have put a... Um, Something in here that says how many people on the line here have problems with testing, <laughs> I mean, or have had problems with testing. Whether you're a farmer, you've had problems with testing. Sure. Okay. If if you are a manufacturer, you've had problems, and if you've sold any CBD at all, you've you've had problems with testing. Yeah. So I think it's pretty much a universal problem, um, you know. And people know about it, but it's like, okay, what do I do? Um, I got some I got some good uh, good ideas here for you guys. Um, problems with the limits. Now, um, this is something that altogether that is, um, you know, this is kind of something that I am doing a lot of research on lately. Um, and, you know, in terms of the problems that we have um, with the limits, I got a big problem with this. Okay, guys. Um, if I have, for example, if I'm doing a separation and I'm doing an extraction and I'm using a, a TTP approved method, Basically, the chemical manufacturer has put into pure ethanol uh, a, a denaturant. It's a contaminant. It's a chemical contaminant. You, it's very, very difficult to remove that contaminant. Okay, and the issue is, is that a lot of the analytical methods that are used for um, measuring the presence of that contaminant, they have very, very high limits of detection. So you can have a lot of it in there. Plus, the limits for those solvents are also very, very high. Like I had this, this tincture here uh, that I made up that was a, this is an FDA approved USP 467 Q3 pass, okay? And it's got all that stuff in it. That's because there's no cumulative max, no cumulative max. So you, they made the specs so 
large as you could drive a truck through it. And actually, I think that this would be harmful to anybody who took it. And you can see these are all of the, in the, um, these are all the class three, except for hexane and methanol. Um, these are the class three, uh, you know, solvents that are on that list. So any of those can be in there at 5,000 PSI and you get a pass. Okay, so one of the things that I recommend you do is, is just don't accept a certificate of analysis unless it has a, a, a known level that it reports, not just a pass-fail. So that's the first thing. And the second thing would be, um, look, uh, I think the limit of detection and the limit of quantitation is really important. Let me, let me explain what that is. What is the minimum amount of this particular heptane, for example, that could be present and the test would still detect that it's there? So if it's like two, 300 ppm, that means I could have two, 300 ppm uh, parts per million in this and in the, the analytical method would say it's non-detect. That's ridiculous. Um, I, don't want, I don't want heptane. I don't want to have a methanol. I don't want to have hexane. I don't, want to, I don't want to eat that stuff. It's not good for you. I'm a chemist. I've already been <laughs> exposed to every you know, chemical. Like I've been handling you know, chemicals like crazy. So I, I don't want to eat it. No. No. That's bad. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. So I anyway, don't I don't know. So this is, you know, a lot of people are doing ethanol. And they're trying to reduce the cost of their ethanol because ethanol is an expensive technique, period. And, uh, and they're using this uh, cheap, chemically, chemically uh, contaminated ethanol. And they're not able to get it all out. And they get the pass and people think it's safe. And it's not. It's got, a, it's got you know, we've seen stuff with, uh, we've done a big study of basically ethanol samples coming into our laboratory for testing. And yeah, we, we see that you know, at least 30% of them have uh, multiple solvents in them. The acetone, IPA, uh, you know, hexane, heptane. It's crazy. People are eating this stuff and giving it to their kids. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I, I just don't like it. Okay. Um, so the, I think there's a big problem with the limit, and I'm not going to delve into that. It's kind of a different topic for a different time, but even if it, it's a part of testing because there's always something that says, okay, this is pass, you know, pass designation, you yeah. know. Um, well, if the, if the pass designation is so high as to what I would think would actually harm you, but it's still got a pass designation, what does the pass designation mean? Yeah. I think it would be much better to have like, okay, it's not in there at all, or uh, you know, solvent free, solvent or just avoid the risk altogether. Yeah, why use solvents? Okay, okay. So, who does testing? Uh, farmers, investors, consumers, producers. Okay, um, farmers are always looking to test the crop for potency and contaminants. Um, so, for example, um, farmers will test their soil uh, before they start. Um, if they're organic, they'll have to do an initial testing on their soil to make sure that there's not any, you know, um, pesticides in there, in the soil themselves. And then um, they test the crop for potency. Uh, typically, as it starts to flower, they don't want the flower to get too much THC in it. So they'll test it uh, regularly just to make sure. And then they'll have the state come in. The state will clip off the flower and uh, tell the farmer, boy, you got 20%. CBD, um, and they make a calculation to the biomass, and they say, oh, I'm going to be a millionaire next week. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite that way because you lose a lot to, to water, and you lose a lot to, uh, you know, sticks and stems, and, you know, sure. so there's yields that you got to think about. So um, investors, okay. Um, investors always want to make sure that the business that they're investing in is using testing to reduce and manage or eliminate risk. That's what we use it for in business. Um, and if you're an investor, you want to ma make sure that your investment is, is protected. So that's why people, Absolutely. investors, really want to make sure that they are using, it's not worth it to skirt the uh, manufacturing methods. It's not worth it to skirt the testing you know, protocols. Um, be better than everyone else and you shouldn't have a problem. Right? And you can charge more. Yeah, you can charge more too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the whole organic certification. That's right. the whole idea of testing for, you know, high quality or no. I mean, right. Nothing. There's nothing in here, and here's the test to prove it. Right. But it's it's a real encompassing test. Right. Otherwise, you're getting in trouble. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So I think 
Yeah. And then consumers, purity, potency, identity, you know, um, consumers typically want to know, okay, uh, did it pass the metal test? Did it pass the solvent test? Did it pass, you know, where's the, where's the, um, potency test to, so that if I think I'm buying five milligrams in this particular sample that I actually have five milligrams, those are the types of things that consumers want. Absolutely. And you know, that, that's where I really, uh, have some advice for consumers. I think that they, if they, really bought, for example, organic, they looked for uh, CO2, you know, labels, basically processed with CO2 labels, you're basically reducing two major risks of contaminants. Um, so mm -hmm. I would say that that would be the case. So I can go into that a little bit uh, later. And then producers, I got, I got a whole list of things, recommendations for producers. <laughs> All right. So here's the, here's the list, what to test. Okay, purity, potency, identity, that's typically done with HPLC, um, which is a technique that separates out all the different compounds as a function of time, and then you can measure how much each component is in there. Um, think of like, uh, for example, if you have soda can, right? Mm -hmm. A soda can, you wanna know how much caffeine there is? You use this, this, uh, this method, this HPLC method, and it'll tell you how much caffeine is in there. Well, that's pretty cool. So um, solvent residuals, we talked a lot about solvent residuals so far. Terpene profiles, you want to know, okay, does it have terpenes in there? What are the terpenes that are in there? Uh, and you could do that with a GCMS or a uh, GC, yeah, GCFID, which is a two different pieces of equipment. Uh, toxins, aflatoxins, mycotoxins, you know, these are things that uh, I've never seen a positive test for toxins in all of the tests that I've seen. It's almost like uh, we don't have a toxin problem, but uh, I, maybe there are some laboratories who have seen that, and I don't... You'd have to have a pretty... Yeah. I don't even know where they where they come from. I wish I knew a little bit more about it, but I, we've have never seen, seen a positive on toxins. If any of you watching, if you've seen any toxins in any of your test results, um, put it in the chat. I'd love to hear about that. Yeah. That would be very curious. Yeah. Because we haven't seen it. It's not there. Right. Okay. Go, sorry. Pesticides, no problem. Uh, pesticides, metals, microbiologicals. Microbiolo um, this includes, you know, E. coli um, and, you know, any type of filth measurements, okay, is what they typically call it. Foreign materials would also uh, fall into that. Vitamin E acetate, um, a lot of laboratories are testing for that. A water activity, moisture, and then I put in their unknowns. So this is what a typical... Uh, you know, a typical manufacturer would want to test. So if you're doing a good, good job in your testing facility, let's go on to the next one. Here. And that's Doug, by the way. That is, that's Doug. That's Snoop. Doug. He's one of our chemists. Yeah. yeah. Snoop Doug. <laughs> Snoop Doug. Dougie <laughs> Fresh. <laughs> I don't know which one. I'm not sure which one he's going by these days, but. Yeah. And he's, he, right now he's tearing his hair out because we're we've got an iso audit coming up oh yeah he's so, doing iso yeah, yeah he's doing iso like so, crazy so but he was working on hplc there right yeah he he was yeah that's that that was uh that was our cute toff there no no that this right here this is a um agilent stack oh and then we have a, a triple quad detector on this for uh testing of pesticides we also have what they call a QTOF, which is a, for unknowns, which we use specifically for unknowns, wow. um, which is a nice little piece of equipment. The lab is very cool back there. It's fun to go back. Yeah, there. yeah. It's, it's, it is really cool. Um, and, you know, if you come and see us, uh, you know, come tour our facility. You'll, yeah. see, you'll see our laboratory, how we got it set up. You'll see people in there working, you know, doing laboratory tests, um, you know. Lots of lab coats back there. Yeah, <laughs> there are. <laughs> White lab coats, yes, the little hair nets, yeah. <laughs> yes. I you know, a lot of them nets. don't don't they? We don't wear the face mask uh, in the laboratory because there's no food in there at all, or there's no you know. So you have that benefit of working in the laboratory. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so this is now where to test in hemp processing and uh, or in your cannabis uh, processing. So um, this is really where to test. So let, let's kind of go through this. Um, and I, I kind of have already looked at incoming testing, mm -hmm. um, showed you some reasons why you'd want to test uh, your ingredients and or your solvents at the very beginning. And typically, uh, you receive those 
goods in the receiving area. They are sampled in the receiving area, and then they're moved to quarantine. Um, and, you know, they don't get released from quarantine until quality assurance has said, hey, look, these are good. And the r- way they do that is they look at the QC results, which is quality control results, from the test, and they say, this meets the specifications for that ingredient, and then they check it off, and they say, it's ready to go. It doesn't go any further than quarantine until quality assurance says it can go to Mm. the rest of the facility. That's just a good check. You know, you got to set this up, and anybody who is running a manufacturing facility needs to really set up that, uh, you know, incoming inspection uh, function. This is an awesome slide. I, I one quick question. Do you uh, did you make this with a dry erase marker or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. You can't look like you. <laughs> it is a it's a little small. Um, yeah, no, I was I Sorry. made it with my my pencil and I whittled it down with my knife. <laughs> so it's gonna like a, okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um, receiving and then goes into quarantine. Um, then after drying, so. Typically, you would do like moisture analysis here. You would do potency, purity, identity, and you, in this uh, receiving section, you'd also want to make sure that you are, are testing for contaminants coming in. I, we had, uh, we had um, in, in uh, Namaji, we had a, uh, a big shipment come in of, uh, of some guy wanted us to toll process for him, okay, mm-hmm. whatever. And uh, it was kind of interesting because it had, the biomass had acetone, methanol, uh, ethanol. It had heptane in it. So the, they had already soaked it and, uh, and sent it to us then for post-processing of that. And there was like 7 8% left in the, in the materials. Oh, my God. So we were like, okay, first of all, the material is hazardous waste. Yeah. Okay, in, and it's like, get it out of here because it's got all these residual solvents in it and it's going to contaminate our entire process. So, wow. But we found that we're just at the very beginning. A lot of times people uh, will go out to the field uh, in, in, in pre-test before they allow it into your, into your facility, but uh, we, we don't own it until we accept it anyway. So sure. that's typically what we do. Um, okay, and then drying. Uh, you know, there's a yield process there. Typically, if you have a moisture content, you can do moisture analysis there. Um, that's kind of a yield process. Uh, you're grinding. Typically, you don't have, uh, if you may want to test for like uh, particle size. But in this case, it, most of the time, you don't test for particle size there at all. So once you know that your materials going into this process uh, are clean and clean and what you would expect, this is a yield process, but it's not really a chemical yield process. So um, maybe you just measure the weight in and the weight out. Decarboxylation, you can uh, test uh, to whether or not you have decarboxylated your material. And then you can go through each one of these steps. Like with your extract materials, you can also do yield processes there. Mm -hmm. Figure out, okay, what's my cannabinoid yield? A lot of people uh, use, uh, you know, weight yield. And uh, there's also such a thing as cannabinoid yield. You can have a very high weight yield, but a low cannabinoid yield. Mm. Some people don't know that, but... Um, so you can, if you, if you have a, uh, if you're measuring the amount of cannabinoids before and you're measuring them after, uh, you should be able to tell, okay, look, I got most of the cannabinoids. Okay. And then in your de-waxing process, that's also one place that you'd want to measure, uh, your distillation. Typically you're measuring potency there. Um, your isolate now, depending on how you make isolate, a lot of people use, uh, you know, like solvents and stuff, if that's the case, you're going to make need to make sure that you have a very robust uh, solvent residual uh, testing process for that particular uh, step. And then uh, in your formulations, that's where you start to get very complicated because mm-hmm. now it's starting to get in, you know, you're mixing up your CBD or you're mixing up your THC with different excipients. You're making brownies or you're making... Um, gummies or you're making uh, you know tinctures or whatever you're adding in oils and sugars and and things like that so you have to be able to measure the amount that's in each one of your formulas and uh, usually that takes a whole series of validated methods to do that so you know 
And then um, typically there's also packaging. Now there's some things that uh, a lot of people miss, um, and I'm kind of going to go over those. With the packaging, um, a lot of, uh, you know, you want to make sure that there's not leachables or extractables in your packaging. Um, and that is if you have, for example, um, you know, phthalates would be a good example of things that come off of your packaging. You don't want those things contaminating your, your finished goods. Uh, you know, the FDA has set up uh, extractables and leachables in food contact materials. So you should go back in there and take a look at that. Just make sure, okay, is my packaging actually contaminating my products? Okay. Most people don't, don't, uh, don't validate it. The other thing is uh, stability uh, testing. So each one of your formulas is going to have to be uh, stability tested. And that is you use a protocol that's been published by the ICH or the FDA. And uh, that just establishes your shelf life on your materials. And, uh, you know, it typically is a um, like a shake and bake or a kind of a bake oven that controls uh, humidity and temperature. And then you're just measuring, okay, is it degrading over time? Okay, that's, and then you can establish the shelf life on the basis of that. Um, and then here's one thing. If you are doing ethanol, um, the FDA says that, that your solvent needs to be brought back to its original condition. Um, and so typically you'd have to revalidate your solvents. Mm -hmm. And that can be a huge cost associated, and, and a hidden cost really associated with ethanol um, extraction. Um, you can, of course, use the solvent again and again and again and without revalidating it. Um, but, you know, that solvent then could, could pick up all kinds of contaminants and then be contaminating every batch going after it. Oh, so wow. that's, that's a big issue with How the revalidation. How often do you think you need to revalidate your solvent? Every batch. Every batch. Yeah, and I would, I would do that for, especially for pesticides. You know, uh, like ethanol is a great solvent for just about everything. In fact, uh, you know, we have a cast strength scotch <laughs> with a very, very high, um, you know, level of proof. Um, it, you know, I know that it'll dissolve your tongue. If you keep it in there, <laughs> it's that, it's that good. It will dissolve your mouth. Okay. Okay. So, um, ethanol is a great solvent for basically everything, which means it's not very selective. And, um, so selectivity is typically what you want in your solvent. You know, if you, you want to be able to have a selective solvent. Well, and the same is true for bourbon cask also, just it, so you know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a bourbon, bourbon guy. He's a scotch guy. We should do a poll on who's, who's scotch and who's bourbon out there just so that we know. But yeah. maybe anyway, there's sorry. Cause that, beer, that's bourbon, scotch. That's vitally important to this conversation about testing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's 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 slightly more interesting but <laughs> <laughs> no, i prefer the space sides uh really seriously i mean uh the space side scotches are some of the best in the world i just like i like the highland i don't like that uh you know the scotch that comes from the islands it has that uh, very iodine taste mm -hmm. to it it's yeah. it's a very peated peated peaty, very yeah peaty. yeah crazy yeah. so Langevoulin. Yeah, Langevoulin oh, and Lafroy. Oh, and my gosh. All that's that. like you chew it almost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, wow, that's smoky. It's very smoky. Um, the, interestingly enough, there's a, another good scotch called the, the Balvini. Mm, and yes. interestingly enough, that is also, uh, it is also a Highland scotch, so it's not a peated scotch typically. You turned well, me on to Balvini. What I, it is really quite good. It is good. They have what's called soft. a peat week. <laughs> did you did you have you seen this no. we had a bottle of it here peat wheat yeah it, okay so what they did is so they use it to like season their stills and everything for it and you know one week out of the year and they do a peated scotch one week out of the wheel so wow. it, it, and they use peat from the highland area wow. so it's not peat that has been um yeah they use it from the from their area okay so it's got a different flavor it's got a different taste and actually, it's it's not bad. Yeah, we gotta bad. celebrate so Pete Week next week. Next Pete year. Week, yeah, we could get some Johnny Walker Blue. Ooh. You know, test that out with Pete Week. Well, that's, uh, see, now stuff. that's the kind of test. Now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> a little taste test. No, a taste test. Yes, it's very scientific. I like that. Okay, okay. sorry. Well, oh, look at this. Oh, oh my gosh! Thank you, fellow bourbon oh, drinkers. Oh my word! Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Zero scotch. Zero percent scotch. Nobody likes scotch. Oh my gosh! I do like scotch. Come on, but guys. I love oh, bourbon, and I'm telling you, my favorite bourbon out there. Just and you can throw in the chat who what your favorite okay. bourbon is since we've got some That's aficionados. Fine. One of my I like rye bourbon, um, and one of my oh, favorites is there we Whistle are, Pig. 
Oh, we got some scotch drinkers. Oh, yeah. Good. Finally. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for showing up. Yes, please. Um, the, uh, that was embarrassing. Uh, whistle Pig, <laughs> Weiser's. Weiser's, Weiser's you know is what good. Why? I like it. But they're Canadian. That's Canadian whiskey. It, well, it's Canadian rye. Okay. But it come, yeah, it'll come in through Vermont. It's good stuff, though, as does Whistle Pig. I, and most bourbon is Kentucky, which is very good. There's a lot of good bourbons in Kentucky. Let me tell you. Jefferson's. I like Jefferson's. We should do a, a just a, uh, a taste testing. Oh, we will be sloshed by the end of this. <laughs> I'm in. Okay, <laughs> testing. Oh, we didn't tell you what kind of testing. <laughs> uh, I love it. That's so awesome. Okay, sorry. Okay, okay no, so, whatever. And I promise at the beginning of this show to um, not interrupt very much. And oh, well, how did I do? Yeah, not, it, you did great. You did great. <laughs> I don't know how I talk so much. It's crazy, but okay. Well, here, okay, look. Okay. Th- so, Look, packaging, stability, revalidation of solvents, these are all things that you need to be thinking about, um, if, especially if you're going to reuse your solvents, reproofing your solvents, finished goods, formulation. So that, that's typically where you'd test. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, what does a C of A tell you? It does not tell you which analysis methods were used. In other words, the exact, exactitude of the method. So beware, uh, buyer beware, okay. It does not show you which sample prep methods were used. That's another huge issue. Uh, it does not show if a valid methods were used, okay, and it does not demonstrate dead integrity. It does show you what they reported, okay. So we have used all kinds of different uh, testing laboratories around the country, mm-hmm. um, and we ended up, uh, one of the one of our say that does most of our tests is ACS mm-hmm. in Florida okay. for, for third-party testing. And they, they do a great job. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend them. Uh, I would recommend them because uh, they seem to be doing everything right. They do a lot of different tests. Uh, we'll, put the, we'll put their link in the notes if you could do that, James, maybe. That would be for ACS, ACS, yeah. yeah. Um, when you do, you know, third-party testing, is it important to um, – uh, not only uh, when you're doing your in-house testing, do you also do a lot of third-party testing as well? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do both. I know we do both. I'm yeah. just, you know, I, somebody right. had asked that question. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. Uh, we're gonna put that in the notes for you guys. Good. All okay. Right. One question earlier too is: um, uh, Are are there any ASTM tests specific to the cannabis industry that you're aware of? Uh, let me see here. Well, there is for equipment, but I don't, I don't think there are analytical tests. That okay. I, that, not that I know of. There is the, um, uh, the uh, see, what is that? That's uh, the herbal, the herbal mm-hmm. um, pharmacopoeia. Okay. Uh, the AHP. I think is what it's called. That's a pretty good resource for you guys. And I do think that they are working very hard on getting out um, fully validated methods Mm. for different matrices. And I also know that the AOAC is doing a uh, test, um, a validate, will be putting out a validated method. And that's, that's actually really great. So they have a validation protocol so a lot like uh, the USP, they would be, you know, testing and they would publish that and then people could use that method and, and rely on the results. Okay, so Excellent. I don't want to belabor this too much. I'm going to try to get back to the consumer. Okay, so recommendations for consumers and producers. Okay, the ones that I have in the square here really is, is, is both for the consumer and the producer. And then I have uh, extra three ones here down here for the producers. So avoid risk of chemical contaminants altogether using CO2. Okay, that's for the, that's for the manufacturer. That's, that's what I would do. Um, and that's not only because we make CO2 equipment. I think it's just, you know, it's who I am. That's why when I first started the business, I, I kind of selected that uh, over a chemical process because I didn't, I didn't want to deal with residuals. Sure. So, and residuals are, you know... There, I don't want to give that to my kids. I don't want to give that to my friends. I don't want to give residuals. Well, as an oh. analytical chemist, that's what you think about. Yeah, and we see everything. Bad yeah. stuff. We see everything, Yuck. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so consumers look for the label, demand a CFA. Okay. So there are labels. You know, everybody who does a CO2 usually has a CO2 label. Why is that? Because 
they've made the investment in CO2 equipment, they've made the investment in CO2 processes, and uh, the facts are is that they are avoiding a huge chemical contaminant risk. So the, if you look for the CO2 label, and they want to tell everybody about that, hey, we think we're the best, okay? So they got a little CO2 label on there. If you're doing any inhalables, I mean, you would have to be crazy not to have, uh, not, to, not to use, you know, at, at least look for that CO2 label. Um, demand of C of A, that's great. Buy organic. If you can get a CO2 extracted organic, you are now have a double whammy when it comes to uh, avoiding the risk of contaminants. Mm. So yeah, I think that's just good advice. Buy organic, uh, demand a C of A, look for the CO2 label. And then you can also listen to what the manufacturer has to say. I think this is, uh, you know, look, when you're going out and you're doing your shopping, um, it's more than just the branding. It's more than just if they have a snazzy label. Um, look at what the manufacturer has to say. Do they talk about how they make um, their materials? Do they talk about how they extract their materials? Do they talk about um, the number of tests that they do? It, you know, not all manufacturers are equal for sure. Um, so, you know, typically if you're buying from like a, a broker or something like that, or, you know, what we call bathtub manufacturers, people who are actually <laughs> making it in their bathtub, in selling them out. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it happens. It does happen. It's, you know, so. Exploding apartments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exploding <Sorry>. apartment. Well, <laughs> You've heard that's the story. happened too. I know. That's happened too. It's crazy. So does the manufacturer care? You can go and you can look, you can talk to whatever their customer service representative and really understand, okay, what they're all about. Listen to what they are telling you because the, the people who are not really super concerned about chemical contaminants, they're not talking about it. They don't care. They're, no, they're just, they don't they're care. talking about um, whether or not, you know. Uh, they're you're opportunistic. Gonna, yes. How much money can they extract from you? Exactly. Oh, by the way, I like your little ear icon there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's very, yes. very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. Okay, uh, for the manufacturer, um, use more than one test lab. Uh, choose a third-party test lab that will meet all the state's criteria. Okay, that's a good, good thought. Um, use an internal lab to ID unknowns and to aid your business. In other words, get your yield processes under control, test your yields at each, at each stage that has a yield process, and you'll be able to, once you, once you know how those processes are going, um, you'll be able to monitor them to make sure that they don't go in or out of control. And then... Um, Quality agreements for your suppliers. Um, use the quality agreements for your suppliers. To, you know, get them signed up. Say, hey, look, we don't want to have unknowns. Here's your, uh, here's your, here's your material. Here's the testing that we're going to run on it. Uh, you guys provide that to us, and you're going to sign a quality agreement with us on that. So that's that's uh, some basics there. Um, but those would be just some recommendations. Okay. Um, kind of aimed at, hey, look, if you can avoid contaminants, avoid contaminants. Listen to who you're buying from. That's just common sense stuff. And then uh, for, the, for the manufacturer, you know, set, your set, up, self, your, set yourself up so that you're avoiding contaminants. You're meeting the consumer demand, which is, you know, organic. And uh, also talk to your consumers or talk to your customers about what you're all about, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, making the best, highest quality product the most pure product that you can. And here's how we put this thing together. It's like putting together a, and that's a just high good quality car. Business practice because yeah. then you're not racing to the bottom. Right. You're not commoditizing the industry. You're not you're not running and building more commodity. Right. The second you go into that commodity orientation and mindset, the faster you're going to race to the bottom in pricing. And differentiate, differentiate, differentiate. And that is being the top. Race to the top. Yeah, race to the top. Have, have that. I mean, there's some really unique, interesting things. I had somebody ask me the other day uh, about a CBDA, yeah. or organic yeah. CBDA, which right. is a real very inefficient process, but there are some people who want that, and we're doing an organic. I mean, it's, it's expensive. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, you can get unique and, and do that and add those differentiators, and now you're testing for good product for quality product. Like you said, I love that. There are so many great opportunities to differentiate your product oh in gosh. this market. Is there, there, it's not just, 
It's not just about branding. Branding is really important. It is. But you can actually differentiate your product. There's lots of opportunities. There is. Yeah. Especially now that uh, with chromatography out there, yeah. with everything that you can do to custom blend and formulate. Right. I mean, holy cow. Right. Yeah. Good stuff. Exactly. Well, um, so I think that that's the bottom line there. Um, you know, if you guys have any any questions, uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, send them in to us. We'll we'll continue to um, write up some FAQs. I know that we're doing that. Um, I haven't really done any blogging on this particular topic, uh, but I might, I might set that up for, you know, some other time. So, yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're doing good. Excellent slides. A lot of things. I know this went a little bit long, guys. I appreciate you hanging in there. And then the questions that came up were, were continually being answered. Yeah. And I was kind of guiding that yeah. a little bit here. I was the, watching them there those, and kind of talking those, to them. So. Those were my, Thanks. Yeah, well done. I, I think that that's, uh, and that's good. I think uh, we hit all of your questions. If there are, if you have any others, you know, they kept coming through. So I appreciate that. Uh, send them through. We'll put those in the FAQs uh, again getting going. Um, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for sticking with us. Uh, we went a little bit long today, but this was good, good yeah. info. Very, very, very good. Um, next week, uh, we're going to be doing a rematch ethanol versus CO2. There were a lot of questions and we have just like pages of questions that it came up that we want to address. Yeah, we really, didn't get, we didn't get to everything no. last time. So, no. so that's going to be, uh, next week, uh, we're going to be talking about that. So thank you for being here. And again, our favorite part of being here is engaging with you. Uh, ha we have, we have a lot of fun. I mean, yeah, shoot, how, where can you have fun talking about CBD and hemp and marijuana and bourbon and scotch. I, I don't know of any other place. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I appreciate it. And uh, Nick, thank you for uh, the updated link and uh, Nicholas, sorry. Um, and Preston, love it. Will it? Nice. Uh, Bowden, thank you. Fellow bourbon guy. Uh, and, and scotch. We're, we're, mute, we're not mutually exclusive. No. I, I, I wouldn't. Call, no, I, I, I do I, like, I do like bourbon though. Yeah. bourbon scotch anyway uh subscribe to our youtube channel everything we're good thank you S scope us out on uh the uh on the social media side uh thank and again uh mama nation we've got uh, tina maxi and michelle benton facebook and instagram winners we will pick winners next week as well so go on social media and we'll throw it out there invite your friends and family uh would love it thank all right you. appreciate it all right good job man yeah talk nice job talk to you guys later okay yep. thanks for being here